Um, okay, Ariana Taylor, teacher, <coughs> librarian, a uh, little bit of everything. Um, why am I doing programs? Ooh. Uh, <laughs> I had the good fortune a few years ago to go to National Geographic Society in Washington for a whole month, whole sticky hot month of July, and train as a geography teacher consultant. Mm -hmm. And uh, part of that was <clears throat> NGS trying to get geography back in the classroom and spreading the word of geography. Geographers think, where is what and why. When you go into a new place, trying to go to the highest altitude or building, get a lay of the land, look around, see what it is. If you were new to this area, did you ask, hmm, I thought this was 213, Route 213, but here it says it's Augustine Herman Highway. What did he do to get a highway named for him? Uh, any of you here have a highway or anything <laughs> named for you? I have a small <laughs> road in Ohio named after my relatives. Oh, good. Yeah. In Ohio. Yeah. Somebody else. Yeah. So, but who knows? After your passing, you might be uh, honored with something named for you. I know sometimes our family members bless us and name us, certain names, but uh, <laughs> we... <clears throat> We're going to focus on Augustine Herman tonight. Uh, before I start with that, there is so much information about Augustine, and some of the things that I came across that I'm just going to mention very quickly before I start with the PowerPoint. Uh, this is a chapter from the History of Chesapeake City, Maryland, compiled by the class of 1917. Mm -hmm. And it's an amazing thing. They didn't have internet then. Mm -hmm. What kind of library resources did they have? It's a remarkable job that they did. Beth, you don't have to take notes. It's on the Cecil County Historic, so Historic Society's website. Lee Collins had put this on, I don't know if he retyped it, but put it on uh, his website and then that was transferred to the Historical Society. So it's quite interesting that that was such a project that that class took on. Um, another fascinating um, is a about a six page, well actually in the book it would be a 12 page poem that was written. So you, but it takes some thinking because some of the terminology, but you know, some of us are hard put to write Jack and Jill poem. <laughs> but, uh, this is quite an interesting piece of telling his history with that. And it was, I found it, believe it or not, in a book about the history of Methodism. So, you know, you never know what's going to turn up when. Mm -hmm. So, quite an interesting piece. Excuse me, is yes. that a poem about uh, Hermes? Yes. About, oh, yes, it wow. is. Yes. Including the horse story, the famous horse story, which will here in just a few minutes. Uh, another one is about <coughs> this smuggling sotweed. Do you know what sotweed is? Mm -hmm. I hope you don't use sotweed now. Tobacco. Tobacco. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Tobacco was a major crop in Cecil County. It is still raised in Cecil County. Did you realize that? Mm -hmm. sure. The Amish are raising mm -hmm. sotweed. Not good for you <coughs> either before or after processing, but uh, Augustine, and this is something we don't know a whole lot about, is that he was in the uh, Dutch Connection and uh, transporting 
tobacco. So that's uh, another interesting. And perhaps you saw Cecil County Life. And you're going to see another picture very similar to this. And this is the story, the current story since 2013 about uh, Bohemia Manor Farm. Have any of you been to the Bohemia Manor Farm? Good. Have any of you? Pardon? Of the wine drinker. Yes. Um, and another resource that I found was quite delighted to. This is from the Delmarva Heritage Series. And just for your information, in Salisbury, on Salisbury University campus, is the uh, NAD Research Center. Uh, and it focuses on the Delmarva Peninsula and resources. So if you're doing any research, you might want to go there. And this particular article, which is titled, Map, Ma Map Maker Came to State as an Enemy and the Enemy Turned to Friend, part one. And it was written by Dr. William Roten, and I had him a few years ago when I was in college. So I thought, wow, <laughs> that shock of recognition. So, okay. So who was this? handsome man. He was an artist, so this is possibly his own portrait. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you are good artistic, you can make yourself look really good. You can always have a good hair day. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, one of the resources called him a very brilliant character. He was a surveyor, a geographer, draftsman, and man of affairs. Mm -hmm. You can read that and read one. <laughs> he knew several languages, and he was very good at negotiating in difficult situations. Uh, Peter Stuyvesant from New York sent him uh, down to negotiate with the Lord Baltimore's in um, St. Mary's <coughs> so. And one person even called him an opportunity. So he knew how to make uh, good on most any situation. Um, when you're looking up, you see, you see various spellings of his name. One source said he was born in 1608, but most of them say he was born in 1621. They all say that he was born <coughs> in Bohemia. Have any of you been to Bohemia? Yes. I lived in Brown for four months. Good for you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Does the countryside there look much different than here? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he was from the Czech Republic. He arrived in New Amsterdam. Where is that? Yeah. New York, yes. And uh, lived and worked there, and then he uh, Probably 1659, he came south to go to St. Mary's County, and he uh, liked what he saw in northern Maryland and came back a couple of years later. And he died on Bahamian Manor in 18, or 1668. Pardon? I'm sorry. <laughs> Can't die before he gets his map worked up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is a modern day map, and the blue star indicates where the Bohemia region is. And oh. as Kim said, it's south of Prague in the Czech Republic. Oh, um, he was pretty colorful. Uh, he settled in the uh, Dutch colony of New Amsterdam. Uh, when he came south, he liked Maryland <coughs> and decided that he'd like to live here. So he had to get acquainted. Well, I guess he was negotiating with the Calvert family, the Lord Baltimore's, so when he went to St. Mary's City. Uh, 
on. The problem was that Maryland and Pennsylvania were uh, had difference of opinions about where Maryland land stopped and Pennsylvania started. And the 40th parallel seemed to be uh, the line that was in question. If they had accepted that, Philadelphia would be in Baltimore. Mm -hmm. Now, Philadelphia would be in mm -hmm. Maryland. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so wow. that is uh, uh, just briefly, and we don't expect you to remember all these dates, just remember the six, late 1600s. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So here he is, all the variations of spelling his name. Uh, and he frequently added the Bohemianist, meaning the Bohemian, after his name. Uh, he married the daughter of um, one of the Dutchmen, Jeanette, or however you would like to pronounce it, in New Amsterdam. And he had five children, Ephraim, Casper, Anna, Judith, and Francina. There is, there was a tract of land, uh, Bethel and across the canal, of course the canal was not there, and that tract of land was called the Three Sisters. Uh, Flo Johnson Craig said part her, her father's farm, the earlier deeds, refer to the three sisters track. So that, if you know where the Johnson farm is out in Bethel, that's uh, what we're talking about. Um, after his first wife died, he married a Mary Catherine Ward. But uh, Sluter, who was a man who lived out in the St. Augustine area, he labeled her a miserable, doubly <laughs> miserable <laughs> wife. So, <laughs> That's saying it pretty straight. Yeah. And the um, whatever kids of his, or his children were still at home, she opened the door and sent them kiking because uh, <laughs> they evidently was not a pleasant household when she uh, came in on the scene. The famous horse story. Um, has anybody seen this picture? Reference to it? This is the original picture, and probably Augustine painted this himself. But the original picture burned when his house burned. Uh, but there is a copy of this picture in Cecil County, but I'm not at liberty to tell you where it is. But there is one uh, still available. The story is that when he went back to New York on business and maybe to gather up his belongings that he had left, he, his property and possessions were taken over by squatters. And Stevenson, by this time, didn't like him and decided that he should be um, hanged or in prison, and while he was in prison, waiting his fate, he pretended to be insane. He asked for his horse, and he was riding the horse around. One story says that he jumped the horse through a window from a height of 15 feet and landed okay, then rode like fury down to New Jersey, down from New Jersey, swam across the Delaware River, and <laughs> can't you just see a modern day cartoon? Yeah. <laughs> the other story was that he was in a, a fort-like structure and a gun or something or cannon had been moved out of the way and he uh, furiously got his horse fired up and charged past the guards and was still able to get out and um, make it down. So uh, that's a story or research for another time. If, you know, could he really uh, 
have written that for? How many days did it take him? So, and could he really have? Uh, he and the horse swam across the Delaware River to come across to Newcastle. <laughs> Makes a good story. So he gets a job as a map maker. He convinced uh, the Lord Baltimore's uh, that he could make them a nice map of their uh, land grant, and in return, they would give him considerable land. What are some of the tools that he would need during this time? Or any of you surveyors or engineers, whatever that, uh, uh, unfortunately, Augustine did not leave a journal or keep a journal while he was doing his mapping. So, you know, you can only go on uh, a few scattered bits in various sources. These are some of the things. It took him 10 years to gather the uh, mm -hmm. data and then to draw the map. And then it was sent to England engraved and four original copies are in existence today. Over there in the corner is a copy of a copy. <laughs> that one is a little bit bigger than uh, the originals. The originals were uh, two and a half feet by three. But, uh, uh, and if you have a chance to look at it closely, we're going to See a couple of other views of it. So. Was it was it called Virginia? Is, is it, I uh, see that was it all called Virginia, not Maryland at that? No, no, it was Maryland. So, uh, okay, there are some of the tools that um, he used. Even though, and I'll get to the map. The map's coming up in the next slide. Uh, when I went down to the Chateau Boudet today, which is the Bohemia Manor Farm. Um, there's this nice big Indian statue there, and there's no label on it yet. And I didn't have a chance to ask the person if who he is. But several of the sources, even though the Lord Baltimore's gave him the land, in a number of cases, he had to buy the land from the Native Americans. We forget that, you know, when you go in, it's very nice and very easy for, you know, somebody to give you something, especially if it's somebody else's. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Could you go back to the previous slide? Yes. You have a sextant in there. Looks nice. Yeah, in the upper right hand, yes. uh, it's a sextant. And I was wondering whether that was used as part of surveying. Um, I don't know if it was it, actual, you it know. It looks pretty modern to me. Yes, this is not probably what he had in those days. Right. Yes. I took this off the internet today. I see. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm guilty of not checking the time frame of. This, but yes. I, I'm an engineer, and oh. I do drafting and oh, all those things, and I use the modern tools, of course. But I am always amazed mm -hmm. at being able to do that with mm -hmm. the tools they had then. Yes, yes. Even with the tools we have today, it's very difficult to make a map. Very yes. difficult. Yes. Of course, if you go with uh, uh, area photography, then that's an easy task. Yes. But just from land, it is amazing that they yes. could do that. Yes, and I've got a, a couple of sides coming up. Okay, here is the map. Look at it carefully. What's wrong with this map? The north Why? is not spelled Why? out. That's the way they did it. Though. If I want to make a map and if I want to put north lines. on the right-hand side, why can't I? 
Yes. What you can get a little more in the space paper. you have is very useful this the size of the paper. Okay, if you use. It's facing north, the, the upper part is west, but that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the compass. Right. What perspective like compass. would we call this? Uh, we're like out in the, the Atlantic and we're looking north west. So, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. uh, here is. He does give you a compass right here, yeah, right? Sure. Mm -hmm. And it is north that way. When you're working with school children, you say, where is north? And they say, up. So <laughs> yeah. Now, think about when, and I couldn't find, this is another research project, when did they become synchronized with it's on the second no, map. Sir, okay. and then when the, the maps system. became synchronized right. with north at the top? No, I don't. I don't. Under Virginia? Yeah. M-A-R-Y-L-A. So it has M-A and then yeah, R. Right. Yeah. On the top, right. Okay, let's see. M-A-R-Y-L-A. And then the map that butts up to it would have the R. A in D. Okay. <laughs> oh, there's the D. Okay. And there's the R. Okay. Yes. Mary. Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, and what is this tool called? What's yeah, it's compass? a divider. It's a compass, a divider. Okay. Yeah, sure. And here's his picture again. And over here he has information. He says Virginia and Maryland. Uh, he knew that there, the Bohemia Manor Grant did not go all the way down. It's this Cape Charles down here, down at the end. He has oh. another compass right there. Uh, lots of detail. I think oh, I read that uh, it has Maryland and Delaware down the eastern shore has something like 3,000 miles of uh, shoreline. Mm -hmm. That's a lot. And something else very impressive. This is made to scale. And the divide is showing what the scale is. So you want to know how far it's from point A to point B. You can put the little uh, divider, the compass there, and connect to the bottom. Thank you for sharing. That's yes. Yes. So, and this is, he says it's the North Sea. What is it? Really? Yeah. Atlantic, yes. So, and I think that Delaware River, Caroline County and somewhere, oh, he has here New Jersey Pars. Well, you know, he missed something. Where's What's the Chesapeake? That? He missed the Delaware Memorial Bridge. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and he missed the canal. Oh, yeah. <laughs> As important as that is right, right. to us, yes. Um, I Ma think Maria, that, yes. Was, was the, the reason for, I'm a little confused, was the reason for him to make this map was to determine the, the, the overlap of the borders with Pennsylvania? No, that was. That, that was before. That was before, Thanks. yes. And he, that's what brought him south okay. was to go. But he liked, um, and that's another presentation or research project is, you know, you could speculate if the 40, if Maryland border went to the 40th parallel, think about the implications of that. So, the yeah. and the Ravens. <laughs> okay, so here is what is in that little, uh, Part that he was quite a um, little Indian boy here. I don't know whether she's an Indian girl. It says Virginia and Maryland as planted it and inhabited this present year, 1670, surveyed and exactly drawn by the only labor and endeavor of mm. Augustine Herman. So he wanted to make sure. You knew who did this job. <laughs> and he spelled it with two R's himself. So yes, no yes. He, he wasn't synchronized. <laughs> okay, so what is this? Why did he go to all this trouble? Because look what you can get a couple hundred years later. Yes. So, a Landsat image. Does that take 10 years to create? So, Think about 
if we went back. Oh. It's amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's manipulate. And. Mm. Wow. Mm. Mm. That's pretty cool. Pretty amazing. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty yes. good. Mm. And we put North mm. at the mm. top. Mm -hmm. And I think it's amazing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What a good job he did. Does that warrant getting a road yeah. name for you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Is it all of 213 or just the part that goes from 40 to Chesapeake City? Um, no, it goes because it becomes Bridge Street I after the, yeah. I don't know how far the label goes. Yeah. 213 goes down to Y Mills. Yeah. I'll, pay, right? I'll yes. pay attention. Yeah. So. Um, and not even with offices being closed call. yesterday, there wasn't enough mm -hmm. time today to call, you know, the state roads department. <laughs> 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 oh. yeah, when you think about the time it would take to run a little boat yes. today, yes. and do that with today's tools, to do all that territory, oh, wow. it's amazing to do it in 10 years. Yes. 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 How does he remember? Where he left off. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Yeah, right. Yeah, right. It's it's you also have to remember. You also have to remember that there's storms, hurricanes, and everything else. Mm -hmm. Yes. The to topology probably mm -hmm. changed oh, over yes. time. Yes. Oh, yeah. How many storms would. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. One of the things that when I was teaching sixth graders, and we were doing mapping and deciding, you know, why is north at the top of the paper and everything. Yeah. And I said, you know, when you're playing baseball, if Lou wants to play with home base, but if Steve over here, he wants second base to be home base. <laughs> and Rich wants third base to be home base when he hits, mm -hmm. you know, that's kind of the confusion that the map makers had. I know that maybe sometime in the 1800s there was a major gathering, I think, of geographers and cartographers in Greenwich, England. Greenwich is, I guess, is part of London. And that's when they declared zero degrees at Greenwich. So possibly that's when uh, they declared north at the top of the paper that uh, Carol or uh, Kim or somebody else is going to have to research that. <laughs> yes. Uh, Wikipedia says that uh, Augustine Herman Highway is from Chestertown to Elkton. Okay. Right, look, right on the spot. Yeah. Okay, that's <laughs> That's good, yeah. Yes. That makes so sense. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. We can certainly know it went the from um, the, the Sassafras River yeah. Yeah. north. So, yeah. But, well, maybe that's why Kent County what? Historical Society invited me to come do this presentation for them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, Bohemia well, Matter. So all this land and what have you, he labeled. Um, and you see, this is another difference in research. This is 4,000 acres. Other places you will see 16,000 or 20,000. He mm. really didn't know how much land he had. <laughs> Again, you know, sometimes he bought it from the Indians after it was given to him, but other times it was just probably a squatter's right type thing. So this sign is on the highway as you're going down to 13 before you get to um, the bridge along the farm there and there. Um, if you go to Newcastle, you will also see uh, this sign. It's on the beginning of Route 9, I believe. Okay. And um, that 
early on, he, uh, Augustine, wanted a connection between mm -hmm. the Chesapeake Bay and the Delaware Bay. Mm -hmm. The road, yeah. uh, some people have called uh, Route 310 the old man's road. Uh, other people have referred to the Frenchtown Road as lost the little button out of the pointer. <laughs> um, the warehouse at Port Herman, I lived in Port Herman, well, I lived on Town Point since 1955, and somewhere, I guess finally the researching this project thought, aha, Port Herman was one of Augustine Bohemian Manor's uh, ports right there on the Elk River. And this building went back to the early days, probably the early 1700s. It was used as a vinegar mill. It was also used a lot of fishing in the Elk River in the early days. And they would mend their nets and of course the ladies in the village claimed a section of the upstairs for a Sunday school room. That was the beginning of Town Point United Methodist Church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, <clears throat> Another uh, part of Bahamia Manor was the, is it, Labadi mm -hmm. or Labadi, mm -hmm. who speaks French. <laughs> Pardon? Je <laughs> parle français. This is out in the St. Augustine area. Uh, and this sign, if those of you, do any of you remember Charlie Bailey's store? This is kind of on the highway there uh, in front of what used to be Charlie Bailey's store. Uh, Augustine's son uh, became involved with this group. They were a commune type of organization. They only lasted maybe less than a hundred years. They were very austere and kept the men and women, men and women separated pretty much at meal time. The workers or the head people sat at the head of the table and food was passed down. The slackers were at the end of the table. <laughs> and if they if there wasn't any food left in the dish, so be it. If you if you weren't, you got to eat. So it's um, and you know, you stop and think, hmm. Why didn't they last very long? Yes, <laughs> <laughs> yes Roger. This store you mentioned, where is it located or where would it be located today? The store? Yes. Um, okay, you're going south on 213. Uh, you know where the big white house, before you get to the Town Point Light, there's a big white house on the right. Opposite that is a road to the left that goes over and connects <coughs> with 310 and right in front of that road is um, right. a brown house and that used to be Charlie Bailey's store. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, and used to be able to get what? 25 cent ice cream cones. <laughs> <laughs> when he had to go above a dollar, yeah, I guess finally he went to a dollar, but when he said it, they put it up, put his price up, so he would have to charge more than a dollar for an ice cream cone. He was going out of business, and he did. So that was. Uh, Is that sign still on the road? Yes, yes, yes. So sometimes just drive around and read these mm -hmm. signs or take pictures. You get a good mm -hmm. local history. Okay, this is uh, an early map from the George Johnston's History of Cecil County, Maryland. And 
Uh, you can see Bohemia Manor. There's uh, Nord up there, oh, yeah. and that's where the track was. Those of you that might mm -hmm. know where yeah, um, Lana mm -hmm. DuPont Wright's farm is, that's where that uh, track was. And I think her farm is named Laddie Mill Track. What was the river called then? Uh, here, Bohemian, the Bohemia River, uh, whether it says Apoquinamic or not, this is Middle Neck. When you come down, when you, you know about going to Middletown on the Bunker Hill Road? Yep. You get down there mm -hmm. and that, if you go on the right hand for it, you'll go up Middle Neck Road. Sassafras has a different name. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think the name is Oper Quinnermine. Okay, yes. O P P E R Quinnermine or something. Or Quinnermine. But not quite Apple Quinnermine. Yeah. yeah. But close. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and the th interesting thing is that Middletown, I thought for many years, was Midway of Delaware. But Middletown is midway between Chesapeake and Delaware. Yes, so. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Midway between what? Chesapeake Bay and Delaware Bay. Mm -hmm. yeah. French Town Commerce and Odessa. Was happening. <laughs> French Town and, and Odessa. That was the, that's the middle of that. Okay. And, uh, but it's, it's a east west middle rather than a north south. So. Right. Any questions so far? Was he? What? Go ahead. Did he, he? He did that huge map. Did he ask for this section, or was it given this section? I think he was. He liked this section when he went south. So you know, and Lord Baltimore's were they even here? <laughs> they might have been down. In, well, I. Do you know if they were here? <laughs> <laughs> St. Mary City a time or two, which is mm -hmm. what, 130 miles or more down the road. Yeah. Uh, whoops. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> okay. How's our time going? <clears throat> okay, so this was not his first house. Mm -hmm. uh, he, I'll show you a picture in a, at the end of what the area looks like today, but that was the second house. But he had quite a gathering and enjoyed uh, <coughs> entertaining people. The Methodist Circuit riders would uh, stop over there. And since he was uh, set it up as uh, like he was Lord of the Manor, and he would he wa they wanted people to come and settle. And the rent for, uh, especially in the uh, research on Port Herman, that people, there, to get a good size farm, they had to pay in November with a couple of years of Indian corn. <laughs> and maybe a dung hill fowl. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> How about a uh, free range chicken? <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't that sound more appetizing? Yeah. <laughs> yes. So, and he, oh, and you also had to keep a couple of uh, hunting dogs or coon dogs so that when he was you know, there and he got the idea on the spur of the moment to go hunting, that, you know, he could and his cronies and their dogs and go off for evening or night of hunting. Um, <clears throat> this was probably the second house, but in 1968 it hmm. burned and um, today when I was down there, this is what it looks like now. Mm -hmm. And the current owners have put a good sized fence around it and have, you know, 
know, warning signs. You do not go on to that. There's an open well there and mm. access to the basement. It's it's mm. pretty uh, sad looking. Mm -hmm. uh, old house be well the house in a few minutes we will be looking at who some of the uh, descendants of Augustine was or are it's a beautiful home. Um, in the 19 like 1920s probably took a number of years this is the house that uh, Senator Byer built quite a grand place this is the Riverside. I think now that one or both of these open porches are now closed like sun porches, quite a nice place. Rich, do you remember who owned the property before the present people? Was that the NBNA? And when they bought it in the mid 2000s, it was the first time it had been sold outside of the, out of the Herman family or buyer family. Mm -hmm in over 300 years. Byron was a hermit. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. so he, said he was saying that mm -hmm. the first time that, yeah. So obviously it's still standing. Oh yes, mm -hmm. it's, well, didn't, who, do you remember his name? He was an he was in, Irish. MBNA executive. Collie. Pardon? Collie. Collie. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, thank you. Uh, collective information. <laughs> um, didn't he spend a lot of money on renovating? It, uh, a little personal note, Dick's aunt was a nurse in the Newcastle area and the Byers, or part of the Byer family, I think was from the Wilmington area. And when Mrs. Mm -hmm. Byer was down there, Aunt Kathleen mm -hmm. went down with her and she thought she was down in no man's land. There were no street lights and that was a very big house so she was always glad to get back to civilization. Uh, the family spent World War II there uh, because the husband was away on with gliders with uh, Alaire's husband oh. and the day the war was over she said she was never coming back. She went back to Wilmington, and she didn't come back. But they maintained that house for her in move-in condition until it was finally sold um, to the MBNA people. Yes. <laughs> well, I knew some people would know some of these blanks to be filled in. Uh, the markings on the slab. <clears throat> He had, uh, Augustine left um, information that this should be, uh, a slab should put over their vault. And it says that he was the first founder and cedar of Bohemia Manor, 1661. Have you heard the term cedar? Pardon? I'm sorry, I was just thinking out loud. It sounds like offspring. <laughs> <laughs> or, um, it was, the slab was broken. It was in pretty uh, fragile condition. But he didn't oh. die until 1686. Mm. So something, you know, was he buried there? His first wife we think was buried there. Um, let's see, Senator Byard had a new vault erected and the old stone. Uh, and notice, look at the arrow there. <laughs> like, whoops, <laughs> you should have put a second R there. <laughs> so that this was probably done by an unlearned person. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. 
mean, just because it's uh, engraved in slate or granite, <laughs> and this uh, one coming up is a new, uh, a granite edition, and was placed over the broken. I think some one of the sources said that uh, it was the old slab was leaning up against the house or a building at one point, and uh, uh, you know, been kind of abused over the years. With mm -hmm. This, uh, let's see, oh. <clears throat> this is a good resource also. Are you familiar with this one? Um, Augustine Herman, the beginning of, beginner of the Virginia tobacco trade, merchant of New Amsterdam, and the first lord of Bohemia Manor in Maryland. And the person, he wrote this and said, uh, the present home of Senator Thomas Byard on his estate near the Bahamian, Elkton, Maryland. <laughs> so be alert when you're reading, you know, especially if it's being researched by an outsider. So where was he buried? The James Byard family, uh, he practiced law in Wilmington. He was a U.S. House of Representative, uh, elected to the House of Representative. He was also a U.S. Senator, and he died August 6, 1815. His remains was, were taken to Bohemia Manor for burial. But uh, the bolt was broken into, and this is why not to bury your loved ones with mm -hmm. rings and ornaments and things, because even back then, graves were broken into and possessions taken. In 1865, Richard uh, Bassett Byer had the contents of the bolt removed to the Wilmington Brandywine um, Cemetery. That's right near I-95 uh, in Wilmington. This is the vault. This is what it looks like. You see, it's like a mound of earth behind this big, impressive structure here. A few years ago, my neighbor Bertie and I were on our way north, and we I wanted to find a picture of this. And you go and you, we had a general idea of which section to go into. But when you're going, and some of them have these little uh, access holes for something, and a squirrel came down. <laughs> 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 uh, I'm sure you could have heard Bertie yelling <laughs> across Wilmington that day. So that was, um, just beware if you're tromping in the uh, uh, cemeteries that there are live residents there. Um, why I, when I originally did this program, I did it for the daughters of the DAR, Daughters of American Revolution, so of course they were very interested to know that uh, he had connection, Augustine Herman had connection through uh, the Byard family to that. But when I called the uh, Wilmington Brandywine cemetery office and I said who is listed as in residence in that mausoleum and she read the names. Augustine Herman was not listed. Whether he is there or not, I don't know how you would find out, doesn't make any difference though <laughs> at this point. But 
A number of the uh, sources say that he was taken from the farm to Wilmington. When you can't sleep this week, here's a, here's a thought for you. How would uh, Richard Bassett, how would they have taken, would they have dug up the remains from there, taken it down to the river, the river shore on the Bahamia, and transported up the Bahamia through the canal and up to Wellington? Or would they have taken the remains by wagon to Middletown, put on the train, and taken it? Mm -hmm. So, speculation. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> That's just a close-up shot of the uh, on there. So. All right. Who, who are some of his descendants? Do you recognize any of the names? Tidings. Tidings. Yes, he was. Was he a Maryland <laughs> governor, senator? He was something senator. in Fiddle. Maryland Fiddle. politics. Fiddle. Is a bridge named for him? Mm -hmm. Ah, mm -hmm. so must have done something. Mm -hmm. Is well. Biddle Street named, named after the Biddle? Good question. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Daniel Bruce, Brewster was a politician. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do any of you recognize any relatives up there? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do we have any evidence or anything that Augustine has impacted our area? Well, for one thing, the we <laughs> need the highway for him. And here he is. Maybe <laughs> 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 he's so, not buried yet. <laughs> <laughs> Wherever he was, he wasn't buried too securely. <laughs> and this was July 29, 1956. Oh. Yes. Is that so, and that is at the foot of the Chesapeake City Bridge. Oh. Oh. Is that sign still there? Yeah, now, those of you who go over the bridge tomorrow morning, <laughs> pay <laughs> close attention to see if the sign is still there. Well, that is Governor Theodore McKeldin, the governor of Maryland, 1956. And this, of course, is August. <laughs> Was the same bridge there then as there now? Yes, yes. The, they only this have one bridge was open in September of 1949. Oh. So. Mm -hmm. And Lewis Collins uh, took the picture and it was published in the Cecil Wig. Lewis is Lee Collins, his older brother. <coughs> but you know, if Augustine liked to put his name with two R's, we should respect that and make mm -hmm. it with two R's. Yes. <laughs> it, uh, here is uh, a picture of Augustine and some of the ladies from the Baltimore uh, Czech Society. And evidently they meet quite frequently and um, I don't know whether they still meet. I would almost think they do. Do you think so? Yeah. yeah. And uh, nice costumes. and. <laughs> All right, here is <clears throat> Mr. James Byer Sr. and Jr. were there for that program also. Uh, an interesting document. Byers is a big name in Wilmington. Oh, yes. Ah, yes. Byers School and Byers yes. Boulevard. And yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. uh, this Czech society in Baltimore, back in uh, 
This was published in the Cecil Democrat. Yes, we used to have two publications, newspapers in Cecil County, uh, the Cecil Democrat and the Cecil Whig. And in July of 1889 was an article, and it includes information about the society writing to Mrs. Byer and uh, then her husband answered. She was in Paris at the time. They wanted to take the slab from the farm and take it back to Czechoslovakia. I think it was Czechoslovakia then. But uh, Mr. Byron wrote a very uh, respectful letter back and said thank you. And somebody else wanted the slab, but it is to remain here. So uh, they wanted to know, you know, if there was some other kind of a memorial or something that could be done, but nothing that we know of has come about. But thought <coughs> it was interesting that people wanted to take it away. Yes, Mrs. Davis. It hasn't been that long ago that fire sold the farm because yes. my sister was a, was a uh, clerk in that uh, that farm that firm, which is still an active firm. Which firm, say, say your last part of sentence again, please. My sister was a clerk, was a, a secretary, really, in the, in the hired firm in Wilmington. Oh, oh, okay. When they, the discussion came up, what are we going to do? And since we live mm -hmm. here, yes. she said, what What do you think? I, I have no idea. I have no thoughts about it. It's not yeah. my land. <laughs> but mm -hmm. the, none of them were interested in, in being here or farming in any fashion yes. at all. Yes. And so the property oh, changed hands. Cool. Hasn't been that long ago. Yes. Yes. <laughs> that is the gentleman there in the middle is Zach Cooling. He was the mayor of Chesapeake City at the time. So of course he was there in the uh, the Maine, Bohemia turns up in a lot of different places. The river, you know, in Cecilden has Bohemia Avenue. We have Bohemia Avenue. Uh, what was the name of Chesapeake City before it became Chesapeake <coughs> City? Was it Bohemia Village? Was it? Yes, I think it was. So, uh, uh, this, the these are uh, in Delaware, just over the line, of uh, <coughs> the name also. And of course, the Bohemian Man in the Middle and uh, High School. Uh, and it was interesting that in his will, he said if in, he had no uh, surviving descendants at that his property or part of his property should be used <coughs> for a school. So it seems like very fitting that our County Board of Education decided that the school that served first and second district, which were part of Bohemian Manor, should be so named. So coming up to modern times, this was 2010. It was advertised um, as Twelve million nine hundred ninety-five thousand dollars. Do we hear a bid? <laughs> is, that, is that what these papers are for? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's very good. That's who got number one? <laughs> number, the number, whoever has number one has to be put in the first bid. <laughs> Did it go for that much? He was actually a Sir Augustin Herman. Pardon? It says Sir. Yes, that was the question I called and asked that agent. I thought you had to be in, uh, to be granted, but I think this agent took the liberty of 
if you have a listing like that, I guess you can do. I don't know how many people called him, but I called and said, how come you're calling him, sir? But, so, how much was it sold for? It was sold July 2013 for approximately three million. Wow. But that was the second time. It was. And so the first time, it was a, a bigger property and there were both sides. And how much did that go for that time? I think it came close to that. It was at least seven and a half, if not more. Yeah. It might have been, it might have been closer to 10. Right. I, I, knew, and, I knew we were going to have a real turkey. <laughs> <laughs> and then money was poured into the restoration of the house. Right. So this was the second time after it was restored. Right. Wow. Which right. was a bargain at this point. Oh, yes. Yeah. But, it, but it wasn't the whole property that was sold the first time. It was only yeah. on that, that side the of the right side uh, going south. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and I think there was some legal discussion, let's say because it was an absolute auction and or it was supposed to have been an absolute auction and it wasn't so no, it was it was supposed to have been a reserve auction okay. but it turned out to be an absolute auction okay so the seller was not aware of the fact that the property was going to go to the highest bidder regardless right. of the highest bid oh. so he probably um. lost $10 million dollars on the property. He could probably have afforded it. <laughs> so, aren't you sad you didn't get here to put your yeah. Yeah. Can you see that house from the road? Any road? Yeah. Um, you can see it from the river. From the river, yes. From what, the Bohemian River? Yes, yes. I'm how about that. So if you've been boating on the Bohemia, you probably saw it then. Yes. You have to look, though. Yeah. Because if you're going out, you have to look back, and when you're coming in, you're turned the other way. You're looking more towards Hex Point. Yeah. There's a small pier. Yeah. Hmm. So, wow. anybody want to move in? <laughs> <laughs> Too late. <laughs> All right. So, today it is a chateau. Boudet Vineyard Winery, and these are pictures I took today. Uh, oh, these no, are I haven't been there uh, since that was wine barrels here. That's the, uh, yeah. the and I, it's interesting the they have one of the old buildings and uh, with the new building they have put uh, the present owners mega bucks into it. Um, and this is and the bottom picture showing also quite a nice facility. You can have parties there. Uh, there was a tent up when I asked, oh, was there a wedding last week or is it going to be this week? And the workers said yes and yes. So, um, you can, I have no idea, but it's probably uh, they're going to pay for it, but it's a beautiful site. Yes. But in the top picture, the clock tower is modeled after a clock tower in Prague. And oh, you can see the same okay. architecture in the lower, the right, that square mm. tower in the bottom. So the architect mm. well, their barn's much nicer. looked at architecture in Prague when he designed oh, the oh, buildings. Nice. Thank you. Yeah. Have you seen oh, that's cool. Nobody knows why. Well, okay. They sort of fly That's the same. Clock to our replica. It's, it's based on it. Yes. Oh, good. Mm. Has to be All looking right. out. Um, of the area. They put in Warriors. like 14,000 vines in 2014 mm. and another 10,000 in 2015. And this is the Bahamia River Bridge. I was standing up oh. and looking right mm. down. It's And the bottom picture is looking southwest, 
over the Bahamian. Mm -hmm. This is Hacks mm -hmm. Point over mm -hmm. here, Long Point, mm -hmm. Long Point Marina there. Beautiful site. Mm -hmm. I think all this team would be very mm -hmm. pleased mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. is his mm -hmm. property mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. He mm -hmm. probably it was oh, not as tidy okay. and well kept mm -hmm. if he had <laughs> Uh, you know, pigs and things were free range. Mm -hmm. He did have a fenced in deer park. He liked to entertain, and you know, when people come and stay, you have to have, uh, he probably had slaves or workers that uh, uh, to make things convenient. And there is the advertising for, and there's the clock tower. It's not a, no, this is a, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. yes. yes so uh, um, this the present owners are Brenda and Warren Dietrich much of the 440 acres they probably have other acreage looking at some of the deeds there were some other uh, transfers uh, but they have about 25,000 uh, vines with Lots of nice uh, wines, reds and whites. My head, what happened to my head? Oh, I, all the pictures I guess I took today, I didn't save, so uh, <laughs> after, after that. So, any questions at this point? Yes, Steve. I believe that Hack's point, was his brother a hack? Yes. No. Or he, no, or his sister or... married a hack. Anna. Oh. Anna. His sister married a hack. Mm -hmm. Any other comments? Yes. I have a question about the city itself. Uh, it's called Chesapeake City. Yes. It's not on the Delaware Bay. It's not on the uh, Chesapeake Bay. Why call it Chesapeake Bay? Chesapeake, Chesapeake City. city. Hmm. Anybody else want to answer? Okay. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Remler. Well, it, connect, it has to do with the canal, I believe, so that under the construction and afterwards, there's a Delaware City on the Delaware Bay side and a Chesapeake City on the Chesapeake Bay side. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This, it was originally Bahamia Village, and uh, yes, and it was very, uh, the original the houses and uh, shanties for the workers. Mm -hmm. Uh, many of which were blacks or um, Irish, and they had very minimal housing. Uh, probably the actual building of digging of the canal went three or four years. If you go out to the Canal Museum, you can see the uh, tools. A lot of shovels. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a program like this about the canal itself? Yeah. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, this little uh, thumb drive I have here is labeled C and D Canal, Augustine Herman. So, yes. So you have to talk to the library about if you want something like that. So there are probably other people. Uh, uh, oh, Mike Dixon. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Thank you. <laughs> uh, Mike Dixon also mm -hmm. does a program on the canal, and uh, I don't know how long ago that I had done one. It might be too soon. I don't know. But talk to the library, sure, sure. perhaps. Any other questions? Yes, Betty. I thought. Did you say something that he was in jail and? Yes. Did they mention, why was he in Because jail? they, okay, he didn't bring back the news, I guess, that Peter Stuyvesant wanted. Also, okay, there was the question yeah. about, was he and Peter interested in the same woman? Oh. <laughs> Need I say more? <laughs> I guess in those days you didn't have a trial by jury. <laughs> yeah. So, thank you. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? It, uh, we almost almost time to clear the deck.